You set foot on foreign soil. Only this land isn't ruled by any country or government. In this land we celebrate music. In this land we celebrate games. In this land we celebrate those who compose video game music. Welcome to the VG Embassy. Embassy. Welcome and thank you for tuning in to another episode of the VG Embassy. This is a show centered around video game music and the amazing online community of fans and podcasters that enjoy it. My name is Ed, and on each episode, I'll take the role of Prime VGM Minister and invite a guest VG Ambassador onto the show to share with us their own video game music culture. Or I might share a part of my own culture on a solo show. This is Scourge Hive with Cam Worma, and we have a repeating VG Ambassador with us, Here today, we're not talking about deep nostalgia this time. Well, we're talking about probably Cam's deep nostalgia, but this is a game that's brand new to me. So, uh, Scourge Hive. Cam, why don't you tell us a little bit about this game, why you... Because I remember you first mentioning this game maybe a couple years back, Mm -hmm. and it would always be like... Somebody would talk about like what's your favorite game and what's, what's one of your favorite game soundtracks, and you'd always chime in with a with a selection from from Scourge Hive, and it's a game that I didn't really ever knew even existed. It was a DS game that came out around the time that I was not really uh, interested in portable or handheld games, so I guess it kind of slipped under my radar. Uh, what makes this game so special to you? Well, I don't go very far back with this game either. Um, I actually have to. Sh- give a huge shout out to mr levy for recommending this game to me Ah. so this was this must have been probably about two years ago um because i was i was just getting into handheld stuff too because i had never really been into it Mm. and uh i ended up with a a a ds it was my mom's actually and um i was just looking for games to play and and i was talking to him one day and he kind of knew the kinds of games i liked he knew what a big metroid fan i was and actually i don't think he played it he knew of it. He might have played it a little, but he recommended it to me, knowing I would right. like it. So yeah. I just, I just, I looked it up, and immediately I was like, "I'm playing this game," and I didn't expect to fall in love with it as much as I did. I love, I love it. It's definitely one of my, I'd say, top five DS games. Hmm. And the soundtrack, I definitely wasn't expecting. I didn't know it was uh, Kaufman, right? First of all. And um, just right off the bat, the music just like slammed me in the face. I was like, this music is amazing. And um, the game is amazing. It's got some flaws, but which we can get into. But uh, yeah, it's, I don't go way back with it. But in the brief time I've had with it, I, I, I really, really enjoyed it. You just kind of got under your skin. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. Uh, it makes sense because Mike being such a big Metroid fan and a big Jake Kaufman fan, mm-hmm. you know, this is probably the, the perfect storm for him. Yeah. So. Uh, it's it's funny that he was able to recommend it to you, and it kind of you you joined in on that. Yeah. Uh, so I, yeah, I don't know how much Mike has actually played this game, so I'd like to hear from him um, about about his opinions. You know, after if he listens to the show, to, to right. find out where where he agrees and disagrees with with what you think. Um, so Scourge Hive was released in November of two thousand six on the Nintendo Game Boy Advance first, I think. I think it was it was. Uh, GBA and DS at the same time. Okay, to put them okay. Both out. So probably tail end of the GBA lifespan, right, right. kind of near the beginning of the DS lifespan. Yeah. Uh, the games themselves, in terms of uh, graphics, music, etc., they're pretty similar from what I understand. Yeah, it looks like an exact port. It's yeah. The same exact game. And uh, the only difference is that with the uh, DS on the lower screen, yeah. you get the uh, the map and some you know extra information. Basically, what what you would see when you paused it would be up all the time on the bottom right. screen. For for all intents and purposes, the games are the same um which is good because jake kaufman's sound engine that he normally uses on the game boy advance 
it's not uh, extractable from like the game ROMs like mm. most other Game Boy mm -hmm. Advance games are. So, so as far as I know, that game has not been ripped yet. But DS games, fortunately, are pretty easy to extract the music from. So that's why we're able to have it on the show. I yeah. think if the game were Game Boy Advance only, this soundtrack might be one of those ones that you could only listen to if you actually play the game. So, do you, do you think it would it wouldn't sound as good? Well, I mean, I've I've heard I've played both versions. I, I played the original Game Boy Advance version just a little bit, oh, and it sounds pretty know. similar. I mean, they don't really sound any different to me yeah. at all. I mean, I think the DS even has when you're playing it through uh, the the DS hardware, it even has some of that kind of a static quality that mm -hmm. the Game Boy Advance does itself. So I think they might have even used. You know, it, it might might even be just even the code is the same as far as the yeah. the sound engine goes. So. Um, I don't know, but uh, it sounds a lot more clear when you extract the music and then play it oh, through it like a great. DS emulator. I, I so. blast this soundtrack in my car all the time. Yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna <laughs> and it's crystal clear. We're gonna hear the the good version yeah, of the soundtrack yeah, yeah, as yeah. far as this goes. Uh, but yeah, Jake Kaufman, uh, listeners to other VGM podcasts, I'm sure know all about him. Um, basically, this this was done when he was uh, kind of freelancing. His major contributions to video games and video game music was when he was working for way forward on the shantae series and and games like game that color. yeah uh live instrumentalist chiptune instrumentalist started off doing remixes on uh, oc remix and then graduated to uh like contra 4 on the ds and ninja turtles game on the ds by way forward oh that's right i forgot about that yeah so check that out. basically composing just about any style you give him and uh great guy he seems to be um you know, very active in the in the community and loves talking about his music and pretty active on Twitter, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So this is one of his soundtracks, and I don't know of a single one of his soundtracks that people don't like. Yeah, 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 definitely. It's my favorite. Yeah. So let's start off with our first track of the day. This is Mission Briefing. So Cam, you want to just set up the the kind of music, the kind of game this is, so we yeah. can kind of fit it into the soundtrack. So this this game is is insanity non-stop insanity so you 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 dive right into it it gets right into the to the urgency of the situation where there's a there's some sort of infection um spreading and there's this 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 space cruiser and genosa she is a uh isn't is I, I i can't think of i think she might actually be a bounty hunter mm -hmm. there's a lot of metroid parallels yeah, yeah. but in the game the gameplay gameplay wise it's virtually nothing like it but you get you get right into the action and the music the music is provides a perfect backdrop for every moment of the the emotion and the action in this game so right off the bat when the title screen comes in you get the uh mission briefing music and it goes right into the beginning of the game it sort of blends into it and it's it's a nice sort of like creepy sort of opening mm. um that sort of gets you thinking oh this is going to be this is going to be a very like sort of atmospheric kind of creepy and then <laughs> and then after the mission briefing, it's like bam, and then it's nonstop the whole rest of the game. Right, right. So yeah, the mission briefing doesn't doesn't sound a lot like the rest of the soundtrack does for the most part. So let's give it a listen, and we will be right back. Back, that was Mission Briefing from Scourge Hive on the Game Boy Advance and Nintendo DS, composed by Jake Kaufman. This is super creepy, and like you said, it's not really indicative of the rest of the soundtrack, but uh, I was remembering the SNES game Nosferatu, which is a very, very creepy horror-themed, kind of a Prince of Persia clone. I've, I've yep. spoken about it a bit on Pixel Tunes, but the uh, introduction soundtrack. to that game sounds almost identical to this and they're totally two different types mm. of games, so that's pretty mm -hmm. funny. Mm -hmm. Oh, very different types of games. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so that 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 
track is basically like this is this is what you're getting yourself into and then immediately it's like psych right <laughs> and then it's like a totally different thing but i really like the atmosphere of that of that track it really sets up it really gets you in a mood it may not be the mood that you're in for the rest of the game but it really it really gets you it really gets you there yeah and i guess the music does kind of fit what's going on on the screen because you've got you know, um, graphics of, like, the base that you're going to be, like, kind of going through throughout the game, and some pictures of, like, you know, cells and viruses and stuff, and they're all very slowly moving with slowly scrolling text from the bottom to the top, mm-hmm. so uh, there's not a lot of action going on on the screen, and you kind of need to slow down and read what's going yep. on to know yep. the storyline, mm-hmm. so the music kind of helps you keep that pace yep. a little bit, and I think once the game starts up and the next track starts playing, it's, it's a great juxtaposition between this very calm song and, like, the the chaos that you're just yeah, thrown into yeah. as soon as the game yeah. starts. So, uh, anything else you want to talk about before we move on to? I mean, there's a there's really a lot to say about this game. Yeah. But um, as far as I mean, we can move on from this from this this track. But uh, but the game itself. I mean, there's what this track does is actually it it, it introduces you to the to the percussion that's kind of really prevalent throughout the, the soundtrack. Mm. The drums really give a really good uh, meaty kind of um, foundation. To, to the music and, and you'll you'll hear in every one of these tracks the drums really stand out yeah there's some really cool uh, rhythms and really really deep punchy um, tom sounds and, and a lot of kick drum and a lot of just kind of industrial drum sounds yeah mixed with the instrument voices that are very reminiscent of a lot of like Japanese SNES mm-hmm. games like I hear a lot of Falcom sounds in this and I hear a lot of uh, like F Zero and and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. So you might be able to pick out those instruments as we go throughout mm-hmm. the show and listen to the music here. So each level is called basically an excerpt, yep. right? So yep. this is excerpt one, cruiser, and this is kind of where the game starts. A little introductory sequence and kind of like blends right into the gameplay. So let's take a listen to this one. That was Cruiser from excerpt one of the game Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. And this is more the sound that we're talking about as far as, you know, the rest of the soundtrack goes. Getting there. Huge yep. difference from yep. briefing. Yep. 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 Uh, what do you like about this one, Kim? This is basically right after the briefing, which is basically the, the intro text. The, the excerpt one music starts and you're into the dialogue. Hmm. It, which really only takes place between Genosa and Magellan, who is the the AI in the cruiser, kind of like, like a holographic robot yeah, type. Yeah, right, right, right. Um, so he, Magellan is briefing Genosa on the situation. This music is playing, and as this is happening, things start going crazy, and uh, the cruiser actually ends up after intro the, the first uh, excerpt, which is really short. The cruiser basically blows up and crashes. Yeah. And the rest of the game sort of takes place in this on this uh, planet. She's immediately thrown in, into it. This music is like it sort of has like a, a heroic sort of feel to it, sort of an exciting sort of like oh what's you know like there's still like a there's still like an air of positivity to it. Right. There's still like a like the chaos hasn't fully set in yet. Yeah, it's very heroic. Yeah. Like, uh, it, and it feels very Japanese to me. Like, a lot of those instruments just kind of come in, and, like, you get little voices here and there from different yeah. parts. 
that feel like they were inspired almost by like Wanderers from Yees yeah. or something like that. I really like the um, the, the the tempo, the, the the rhythm of the song. With the uh, I'm not I'm not good with uh, time signatures, but it's it's hard to identify exactly what it is. But but it, it really moves around a lot. It's not it's yeah. not it's it's not very straightforward. Um, but this is one of my favorite ones in the game. But um, it's one of the shorter ones too. I think um, one of the more bouncy ones. That's for sure. Yeah. So to talk about the game itself a little, it's an isometric um, view, but it doesn't have isometric controls. Like right. you know, some games have the uh, diagonal isom- isometric appearance. So if you press up, you will move up into the right. Right. Yeah. But, but this which, is up is up, which and... to me confuses the hell out of me. Like, <laughs> if I'm playing like Solstice or Equinox or one of those yeah. games, I, I have to like tilt my head and, yep, and yep. sort of. <laughs> but with this game, like the 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 view is isom- isometric, but you have full uh, control of Genosa, so you can move around and jump around and you'll be you will be running and jumping and shooting non-stop the ai of the enemy is simple it's just find you kill atta- you. yeah so you'll just be swarmed and overwhelmed by enemies that are just constantly rushing you there you won't have a lot of enemies that are in the distance that you kind of have to like that you can prepare for right they just right. come at you and you got to jump and flip around and it's just like it's like a run and gun because you're constantly running and you're constantly shooting, constantly flipping, turning around and yeah. shooting. It's it's craziness. And, and most rooms will have a wide variety of enemies, like bigger enemies yes. and then smaller yes. enemies. And usually you can clear out the, the bigger enemies and they won't come back. Right. But these smaller enemies will always those little biting just enemies. off the screen will always be coming in yep. to, to try and, and kill you. So you're never really hundred percent safe no, no matter where they, you are. And and they will always they will always sort of spawn off screen. Yeah. So you can you, you could clear the enemies and they'll keep coming and you'll be like, where the hell are they coming from? Right. And as soon as you move to the right, you'll get one coming from the left. Yep. And then you go left and be like, where was that coming from? And it'll they'll always spawn off screen. Yeah. And you'll never know where they're coming exactly. from. Exactly. And they're they're constantly making that little chomping sound. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's like <laughs> Yeah, they're like little like I don't know, they almost look like pills, like yeah, capsules with jelly like little beans faces on them that be- just kind of yeah. bounce around and, and try to try to eat you. So yeah, yeah. beanbag chairs. Crazy stuff. So the way the soundtrack is set up is that there's an excerpt track and then there's a boss track. So it's kind of all, yep. we're, we're going to be alternating with a little break in, in, in the middle, but we're going to go excerpt boss, excerpt boss. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Each boss is a huge screen filling monster. Uh, each boss has its own individual music, which is really cool. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah, expect yeah. anything less right. from Mr. Kaufman. Right. So uh, let's listen to the first boss, Scylla. And when we get back, we'll talk a little bit more about the gameplay and what happens next. That was Boss One Scylla from Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. And so what we did for that is we uh, we wrapped that song in a couple of uh, jingles that are from the soundtrack. Uh, the first one was the Boss Intro song, and then it ended with the Boss Defeated song. Um, these are the same for every single yep, boss, so we one. just wanted to kind of throw them in for Boss One, and then, you know, you could just keep in mind that they, they also exist for all the other bosses, mm-hmm. but we're not going to play them over and over again for... For not, obvious reasons. Not for all of the bosses. Not for all of them. The final the, the final stretch of the game is sort of like a boss rush. You don't, you don't get that, that jingle. Oh, <laughs> neat, neat. Okay. Spoilers. Yeah. So, um, your thoughts on this one? Well, this, like you said, every boss has its own unique music. Um, and each one, each one has sort of a similar chaotic feel to it, mm. where it's just like pure action. And every boss has a unique sort of mechanic to it, so you kind of have to take a different approach with each one, which I love. That's that's great. Yeah. I hate when games just they just take the same idea and just right. repeat it for Hide boss. here and shoot and yeah. go there and shoot. Unless yeah. it's like a beat em up or something. You just have a guy you gotta beat up at the end of the level. Yeah. But um yeah, every every boss is different. 
Um, there aren't, to me, there aren't really boss, they all, I love all the boss tracks in this game. There isn't really one that stands out. Actually, maybe there is, we'll, we'll get to that though. The first couple bosses in the game, they kind of, at least for me, they got me thinking sort of like, all right, well, these are cool bosses, but they're not that difficult. Yeah. Like, you just kind of, you find out how to, how to break them and then you, and then, and then that's it. Yeah. After the first couple though, it starts to get hard. <laughs> it starts to get very hard. Scylla had kind of a, um... Like an RPG boss yeah, feel yeah, to me sure, because yeah. it's got you know there's it, it's like a big plant. several parts you gotta yeah, yeah and this is where you you first start to learn about what the scourge is too right. it's this kind of rusty Biomass. red yeah. gelatinous material that covers surfaces and uh, and the boss itself is kind of growing out of this scourge virus and um, it's got four kind of areas that kind of jut out of it and each one has its own little biomass mm -hmm. and those biomasses serve to heal the main part right so you can't Very kill RPG. the boss until you've killed all four of mm -hmm. these little you know things are surrounding it but they grow back after a while so yep. you've got to take out all four real quick mm -hmm. try to and kill that, as just, much as possible off yep. the off the main boss before they all grow back and then you mm -hmm. kind of repeat the cycle over and over again yep. so uh, yeah, basically like like a like what you would see in a turn-based RPG, but in a real real-time action mm -hmm. kind of a game. So that was pretty cool. Yeah, and this, this like this this one is a, a a pretty good introduction to to the bosses in the game. Yeah, you kind of it's you got to be moving constantly, like I said, but it, it you can take it out pretty easily and then move on to the next area. Yeah, and a lot of them do have multiple forms as well, so you're yeah. you're always kind of fighting it uh, the same thing kind of different ways. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. it's very cool. Um, and this also does kind of forcibly expose you to the Scourge. Like, you mm -hmm. have to come in contact with it in order to beat this boss. And, um, I don't know. We want to talk about the Scourge now, or you want to wait till the next... Hey, we can talk about the Scourge anytime you Let's want. Let's talk about the Scourge now. So, this is kind of what gives you your uh, sense of urgency throughout the game. Yeah, a big, it's definitely a big part of it. So, Genosa has a... She's equipped with a special suit that allows her to sort of... It d doesn't affect her as kind quickly. of mitigates the effect. Yeah, exactly. Of the... Yeah, but still, I mean, you you have a uh, you have a meter, a, a scourge meter at the top of the screen that shows you your infection level. So as soon as you go to a, a decontamination center, it brings it down, but immediately starts clicking up again. Right. So during the gameplay, it's constantly moving up, and there are things that will increase it. So if you walk through like a scourge mass you'll see the number go up quickly. Right. So you're constantly kind of jumping to avoid it. And there are, uh, like I said, the uh, the uh, decontamination centers or sick, the sick bays, which are located on the map. And you can, you're can you constantly just rushing to find the next one mm -hmm. because you're just, you're, you're just, basically you're constantly dying. That really is the feel <laughs> of the game. So um, not only are you constantly dying, you are constantly avoiding getting killed, <laughs> which right. are two different right. things. But it, but they're both constant, so you're like I have sweat during this game more than any other game I can think <laughs> of, and the feeling you get when you finally find a decontamination center, which is also the save point, it's like it's sweet just relief. Like, it's like oh oh, yeah. oh man. So when, when your when your meter gets up to a hundred, basically your energy starts to drop. It just starts. To, it just starts to starts to drop down, and yeah. it creates a sense of urgency because as the scourge meter goes up at the top at the top of the screen, this heartbeat sound gets faster yep, and yep, faster yep. and faster, and you're like. You can tell that Genosa is like, oh my god, yep, you know, yep. I gotta get to this next one really quick. Um, the scourge itself, we should just talk a little bit about it. So, so it's a, it's a biological virus, but yeah. it affects and infects technology. So it will right. uh, attach itself the biomechanical to biomechanical sort of infection. yeah, and and it will corrupt. Uh, it corrupts Magellan at the beginning of the right. game. Yep. It corrupts. Uh, you know, security systems mm -hmm. and security robots that would normally be yeah. protecting you from intruders. Instead, it sees you as an intruder, right. so it's trying to attack you. So there's all sorts of crazy stuff. So you're not only trying to defeat the biological organisms that are created from the scourge, but you're also trying to defeat the technological entities that are Basically running around in space. Basically, everything everything that's there that's mechanical gets if infected. If it moves, you shoot it. And there, it, it infects everything and everything and anything. So it it affects biological life forms. It affects energy beings. It affects all the robots, all the mechanical mm -hmm. um, entities. And there's there's um, for some reason I'm I'm blanking on it right now. There's an I think there's another form of enemy. I can't think of what it is, but I could be wrong about that too. Maybe it is only the three. But um, that also plays into a very interesting mechanic, which we can get into maybe a little later on. Sure. 
So speaking of uh, getting into something later on, let's get into our <laughs> next track. Uh, this is from Excerpt 2, and the level's name is Biocore. Let's give it a listen. That was Excerpt 2, uh, Biocore from Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. Um, so this this track is actually the one that sort of made me fall in love with the music. I, I liked it from the beginning, mm. but this one just kind of got me hooked into that just bopping, constant... Yeah, yeah. It feels very Metroid to me, I think. It's got that kind of creepy back instrumentation where it's like things are bubbling up and things like yeah, that. Sure, uh, yeah, sure. The, once the percussion comes in, it doesn't so much remind me of Metroid anymore, but at least like half the song is with percussion and half without. Yeah. And the without part I like feels that, a actually, lot more yeah. like, like you know, Brinstar or something like that. Yeah, sure. I, I like how the um, once it gets to sort of that loop point, the percussion drops out. Yeah. But everything else kind of continues. So like, and then it sort of gets gets back to the sort of the creepy feeling and then the drums kick back in and it's, then it gets back into that boom. Yeah, <laughs> I, I I love this track, and this this was it's funny because um, during the, the when I first played this, uh, my girlfriend at the time who was not into video games or video game music at all, I when I was playing this part, she was like, "What is that? That's pretty cool." <laughs> so I was like, "Yeah." So so I was like, "Hey, <laughs> um, finally you noticed." But um, but yeah, I think that it has a very infectious beat yeah. and a very infectious um, melody, especially when you get to that middle part. Where it sort of changes tones to that more like uh, positive sort of yeah yeah sounding. It has a section. lot of like like positive. The higher the notes that are in the higher register feel a lot more positive. Yeah, and then the notes right. in the lower register are kind of mm-hmm. creepy and arpeggiated yeah. and dun 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 yeah. dun dun. But you up top you got da, da, right right right. You know right. it's it's like two parts that yep. are almost Juxtapose. almost kind of like demonstrates like the scourge taking over the base you know you've got yeah. the, this bright sci-fi future kind of uh, yeah. kind of technology around you but then you've got this this darkness kind of creeping in Impending underneath it so threat. yeah i'm sure you know i don't know if Kaufman composed that because of that but it's 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 it, it feels like it fits the yeah, level the, very well i think there is a lot of deliberate a lot of the tracks sound deliberate like he like he composed them for to fit yeah you know not all composers do that, but I think he he's very deliberate with his composition. Yeah, I think, I, I, for the I, most part. I think beyond being an extremely talented composer, he also has the benefit of being a hardcore gamer. Yeah. He just loves video games. So mm-hmm. he can take information that the developers are giving him and you know, parse it and understand it a little bit better than maybe a composer that doesn't mm-hmm. really play games that much. Yeah. And so, you know, they can show him a little bit of gameplay or like an, you know, a beta version of yeah. the game and he can immediately get the feel of what's going on rather than just be right. like, oh, you know, here's the artwork. Let me find some instruments that kind of feel like yeah. this. You know, they can actually, he can get to the, the mm-hmm. heart of the game and the gameplay and, and compose for that as well. So He strikes me as being very cerebral, like in, in the way he 
Um, he doesn't just like make a, a catchy melody and and I don't right. want to. Here's I what's in my head right, right. now. I'll just yeah, make yeah, that yeah, the song yeah. for this. There's level. nothing wrong with that. Obviously, there's lots of great music, but yeah. you can tell like with a lot of his music, there's a lot of thought. I think a lot of thought put into it. Absolutely. And I love this soundtrack because it's very unique amongst his other soundtracks. Mm-hmm. Um, he has a lot of stuff, especially with his newer games that, as good as they are. And I really do like them, like uh, like um, the Shantae soundtracks, like the later Shantae games, and like uh, Mighty Switch Force. To me, they sound a little more like uh, like soundtracks to like a cartoon or something. Yeah, more very so than polished. A, yeah, more yeah. so than a video game. This one to me really stands out because he's got he's got the uh, the really retro sounding sort of Game Boy Color, like the early like the first Shantae game and that stuff. And then and then there's sort of like this game, which. Is sort of like a middle point mm-hmm. where it ha- he sort of had this this sound, and then he kind of moved on to like the more modern stuff. To me, this one really, I've heard from a couple people, including Mike actually, who were like, "Oh, that's a Kaufman soundtrack." I didn't even know that. Right, right. Because it doesn't. You might not. Str- if you're a fan of his, you may not notice right away because yeah. it doesn't really have his. I want to say trademark. It doesn't really necessarily have one. It's but. very like groove based. A lot of percussion. It doesn't. Very groove based. Yeah. You know, he he uses um, much more melody. I think in a lot of other soundtracks and kind of lets the yeah. percussion kind of accentuate the melodies. Mm-hmm. And for this, it's all very like you said, industrial, very uh, grindy and and kind of plodding along. Yeah. So I think that you know people don't really associate that with with him. And we were talking off mic before. I'm more of a fan of his soundtracks where he is limited to a certain number of channels. You know, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, uh, DS, sequenced music like that where he can't just layer and layer and layer on. Mm. And they sound fantastic when they're layered up like that, like Switch Force, etc. That's just not my cup of tea as far as music goes. I like more of a thinner, more like raspier sound. And this really kind of fits all of those checkboxes for me. Yeah, I think there's something for everybody in the soundtrack too. Like there is a lot of this like dense, heavy, sort of like gut pounding, sort of intense music. But there is some stuff with really nice melodies and and some more atmospheric stuff too, So, which we'll get to. Cool. Which is one of the reasons I love it so much. Cool. So speaking of gut pounding, let's listen to the next boss <laughs> track. And let's get our Pound guts, guts. Yeah, let's get our guts pounded by Cyclops. We'll be right back. Right, we're back. That was Cyclops from Scourge Hive, composed by the man, Jake Kaufman. Lots of alarms, lots of yeah. trancey, techno sounding. Danger, danger. Glitchy. Very cool track. I really, I really like this one. What's your take on it? Yeah, I mean this this might be one of my favorite boss themes in the game. I really love the uh that uh trancey feel and that sort of really that the sense of urgency that it creates with that alarm, that sure. danger alarm, yeah, that that repeats at the end, at the beginning of every every loop. This is an in, intense fight, but it's it's not it's not terribly difficult. Yeah, 
This is the second use of alarms on VG Embassy so oh, right. far. What was that, that, that Black Racers track from right, uh, Mother from Russia the... Bleeds yeah. that uh, Emily and I were gushing over. Um, and this one fits well too. It, it just it serves a different purpose. Like you know, the alarm was like an air raid siren in the and that other track, and it was a lot slower and heavier and really yeah. took to, almost took the place of like the bass of the song. Mm -hmm. But this one's more like almost like like an arp. It's like wow, 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 just kind of in the in in the mid range there. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's funny how you can use those sound effects as yeah. different different yeah. instruments. In, I like in the, the way it was used in this one. I like the way it was sort of like the beginning of the track. Yeah. And then once you get to the end of the loop, it starts over again. I, I, I like how it was used as sort of like an accent. Mm -hmm. With that, what's it called? Mother Russia. Mother Russia Bleeds? Yeah. At the beginning of that track, not to completely go to a different episode, but <laughs> at the beginning of that track, I was like, oh, that's cool. I'm afraid. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then, like a few, uh, like a thirty seconds in, I was like, I'm tired of hearing, this, of hearing this <laughs> alarm. But, uh, but yeah, that that was a, that was a good try. So uh, anyway. it's yeah, it's funny because they they took it out for the commercial release, and Emily and I were like, Yeah, what remember the hell? you guys talking about? Took out the best part of the song. Yeah. But uh, so describe this boss a little bit. It kind of reminded me a little bit of like some contra bosses. Yeah, yeah. There. So there's a the um, Cyclops is this. I mean, I, I hesitate to call anything a creature because technically it's an infected. You know, yeah, whatever it is, it's more more mechanical than biological. Yeah, right. I think. So yeah. it's 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 fixed to the wall, and it kind of moves left and right, um, and it and it has like a um, a section in the middle that opens up that to expose like a, a vulnerable, you know, the, the place that you got to shoot. Yeah, and it shoots this this beam and moves kind of left to right and forces you to avoid it, which is actually is pretty tough to avoid that beam, I think, but it doesn't hurt all that much. Mm. And when it opens up, you can just you know blast it. And right. another thing that's sort of similar about this with uh, certain RPGs is that the bosses have, like, the health meter. You'll drain the first meter, and then a second one will appear mm -hmm. to, for, the, like, the next form. Then you got to drain that one. Yeah. It makes me think of uh, it makes me think of Shining Force a lot. I don't know if you've played yeah, Shining Force. Yeah, even, even, like, Final Fight had those kind of meters where yeah, they'd be just true, different, yeah, different yeah, colors, yeah, and you'd yeah, knock them down. Yeah. The cool thing about these, at least, is that there's a number next to the meter, so you know how many times you have to drain it before you finally defeat right, the right, boss. Right, 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 so right, it's right. not like you're just kind of guessing in the dark. Right, right. But yeah, your your hit meter is made up of hit points, so you have a numeric yeah. designation as far as you know how much energy you have and what you've got left. And you do level up as you go by yep. defeating enemies mm -hmm. and collecting these little green blobs yep. that come out of it. They give you they give you um, they give you health back and they give you experience. Yeah, so you, which so is you nice. level up just like a just like an RPG. Yeah, team. and it's it's every enemy you defeat, right? So even um, yeah, but occasionally they won't give you one. Okay, just I don't really know why. But yeah, sometimes you won't it's get it, one. But it seems like like at least seventy five to eighty percent of them tend to give you these. And what's interesting, at least at the beginning of the game. Yeah, what's interesting about this? This is another thing, just a very subtle thing they did to make to add to the challenge, like it needed to be harder than it is. But when you when you kill an enemy, that little green energy blob that shoots out is it's sort of like thrusted back away from you yeah so you can't just kill the enemy and grab it you got you kill the enemy and then you gotta then you gotta go, go get it for it yeah. <laughs> because because they shoot away from you luckily it has some sort of an attractive yeah quality. there's so there it'll, it'll have... come to you once you get yeah, close right, enough right, right, but right, right, at the exactly. same time sheesh sometimes yeah. they'll go all the way like outside yeah. of the the confines of the yep, level yep. and you have to get right to the edge of the level to get sometimes it you got to leave them behind sometimes you'll be yeah. dying your energy will be critical and there will be some of those floating around but you but to get to them you'd have to Get through more enemies, yeah, or go through some scourge, it's just or constant, yeah, it's constant, crazy. Yeah. All right, so uh, Cyclops to me reminded me of the boss at the end of base one in the first Contra game. You know, where you get through that level where you're walking into the screen, mm -hmm. and then there's that little. There's like a I always call it like a Transformers face at the top of the screen. It would move back and forth and shoot yeah. these little like onion ring things at you. I haven't played Contra a whole lot. Okay, so yeah, but it, it kind of reminded me of that, except it shot you yeah, know, like I a straight beam instead of yeah. those those little circular bullets. Mm -hmm. But uh, I was kind of reminded of that. I think this game takes a lot of inspiration Cues, yeah. from other games and I think you know like Jake Kaufman's music always takes inspiration from other games too so it'll be interesting to see what other games we can we can come up with as we as we listen to more of this music um, so we're coming up on at least from the music that I've heard so far in my listening to the soundtrack which I haven't heard the whole thing so um, mm. but this is excerpt 3 industrial and uh, it has a very industrial feel so let's it. give it a let's listen do it.
so that little number there was excerpt three industrial from scourge hive by jake kaufman so some listeners may remember this one from uh, vgm jukebox this was one of my my submissions and this is definitely my my favorite track in this game it's so good oh my god like this (laughs) this i have told my car to play this one probably more times than most tracks because of the you know the voice the the, uh, thing I have said, I have pushed the button and said, play track excerpt three industrial more times than I can, I can say. I just, I crank it in the car. Those, those, uh, that crunchy guitar synth and, uh, and the, those rock drums just like immediately just are just like really thick and awesome. And then, and then it's to me, it, it for me, when the, when the chorus, I, I refer to it as the chorus, you know, it's, there are no words, but to me, it's right. That's how I think of it, you yeah, know, like rock I can, I can sort of background. When that when that comes in and you get those that like three layered with with the guitar chords kind of climbing and that that arpeggio in the background and that and that that lead synth the melody, oh, that's like that is like m- my like preferences like in a nutshell mm-hmm. musically is just like everything kind of fitting together like a yeah puzzle piece. right a driving chorus and then a or a, a driving verse and then a chorus that just like it just like it gives you the best kind of goosebumps. <laughs> I just, I just love the feeling of it, like the, the climbing guitar and the and that that beautiful melody, and then it just kind of comes like, crashing back to the to the verse, and the, and the melody fades out. Yeah, it's a very different feeling from the beginning of the track to the end of the yep. track. And it's very soaring at the end, mm-hmm. and then the beginning is very like, foreboding mm-hmm. almost, very kind of evil sounding. Um, and I'm I'm right with you on that. You know, I really as soon as the song started up, I was like. Industrial. So obviously, you know, that's the first thing Coffin probably thought mm-hmm. of was mm-hmm. that, that mm-hmm. kind of grindy beat with those chuggy guitars. That's kind of like your quintessential, yeah. uh, almost uh, cliche industrial music. But mm-hmm. then he goes and does so much else with it that I wouldn't have even thought to do with yeah, it. Yeah, it's almost. And it it has, sounds so good. It has almost more of a pop feel because the, I think the chorus has such a hook to it yeah. to me. Like the the three parts together, the the the, the guitar chords, the the um, like the palm muted guitar chords in the background that arpeggiating part like a keyboard part right and then the melody those three parts just they play so well together and i just i love this track with with every excerpt in this game I, the the music sort of gets it sort of just kind of repeats it's it becomes background mm-hmm. and i sort of just get used to it when i'm playing excerpt three like i just i enjoy every moment of the, every loop i'm just like oh yeah i get to listen to it again yeah, and again yeah. even though i'm running around crazy i actually kind of hate this excerpt like this it's, level's pretty hard. It's tough because you're 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 trying to find the um, the security drones or whatever the heck well, they are. Yeah, you got to find you got to drag those around with yeah. the grappling hook, which is a really cool mechanic. But you're you're also I don't know if you've gotten to this part, but at a point in this excerpt, you get to a point where you have to find these pump stations. Yeah, and no, you have I haven't. To, this, this is about as far as I've gotten in the game. You so got to raise. The of this one. Yeah, you got to raise and lower the water levels. So you okay. you activate the pump station. And it will raise or lower the water level in other parts of the of the area that you can't see. Gotcha. And you don't know until you go to those rooms. Oh, I raised the water, but I don't want it raised because there's a key card under the water. Mm-hmm. So you got to go back to the pump station, and you're constantly going back and forth with the pump between the pump stations and kind other of rooms, configuring the, yeah. the level. It's so tough. There's a, there's it. like a puzzle element to it. Yeah, yeah. I don't hate it. It's just one of the more like tedious. Tedious. Ones. Yeah. But the music makes it. Music makes more than makes up for it. <laughs> so it does bring up a good point. So they, they're, um, Genosa does have this kind of grappling hook yeah. that you can use with the L button. And uh, it's just it's kind of like a bionic arm that kind of mm-hmm. shoots out. You can drag enemies around. You can drag little pillars around to jump on them. You can use it to manipulate the world in, in mm-hmm. different ways. And it, it kind of... Um, it's part of the puzzle element of the game. Yeah, exactly. It. It, it adds a, a bit more of... It's, it's a new way to... to Add to the gameplay rather than yeah. just jumping and shooting and jumping right. and shooting, so that's that's pretty cool. I haven't used it too much because the levels I've been through haven't used it, but I'm mm-hmm. sure there's some more innovative ways that you can probably. Mm-hmm. There's a um, lot of um, there's a lot of like uh, buttons in the floor, mm-hmm. and you have to find like uh, canisters and objects and just like to hold the button down. Yeah, and, you drag yeah. it over. Meanwhile, while you're dragging this thing over, she slows down. You know, because right. she's pulling this weight, and you got to avoid the <laughs> enemies while you're doing it. It's 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 uh. It can be hellish, but um, there's a lot of like button pressing with objects yeah. using the using yeah. the grappling mechanic. And they which they is fun. they explain it in the story well too. Very because well. Because yeah. 
everything. You come across these computer terminals, and you'll see you know emails between right. um, members of the of the the installations that you're in, and they'll be like. All right, we've got this new weapon that we've located exactly. in, you know, yep. basement lab four. But you know, because it's such a dangerous weapon, there has to be security measures. So mm-hmm. two people have, you know, two security officers have to stand on this switch, you know, or these switches right. to be able to unlock it. But you're the only living person in there, so, yeah, so that's... you've got to figure out a way to get both of these switches down to get to this next item to get to the rest of the levels. So. Right. I love that. I love that aspect of it too. She's kind of figuring everything out by going to these these little kiosks, these little terminals, like yeah. you said, and. Um, and you'll get like a like a flashing red indicator that tells you to go to this and read it because there's something there. Yeah. And um, it tells you, it, it could tell you like where, not necessarily where a power up is, but maybe what to expect. Like they'll be talking about like, uh, I just want to let you know that the next thing is ready. Or, right, right. I couldn't get it ready, but it, you know, it should be. There's you know, always some sort of a hint there yeah, to let you know what's coming right. up, where you might need to go to find right. it. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And the dialogue, I don't know if you noticed, is very well written. Mm-hmm. There's, there's never any like... Uh, quick sort of one person says a couple words the other person says another couple just to move the dialogue along it's all very well fleshed out and very well written and very smart yeah i really yeah. i really like the way it's written yeah it's nice that it's not you know translated from japanese yeah, or anything like that so it's it, yeah. it's kind of built from you know native native speakers which is nice yeah all right ready to get onto the boss track sure all right well this one is called atlas and it is boss three let's take a listen That was Boss 3, Atlas from Scourge Hive, composed by Jay Kaufman. Damn, man, I am totally rocked the hell out. <laughs> we should just pack it up and go home now. Yeah, my my yeah. neck hurts. That's an intense one. <laughs> That's my fav- uh, that is my favorite, I think, which is convenient because it's my favorite excerpt, too. Just my, my favorite level music and my favorite boss music. Like, a, to like the perfect sandwich on yeah. perfect bread. <laughs> yeah. They're all intense, but that one in particular, it starts with that. Yeah. That really, uh, that's that's intense. And the, and the battle is this this boss is substantially harder than the, than the, than the previous one, and the music really reflects that. And it seems like it's a really long battle. Too. It is. It's, I mean, definitely more so than the, than the first two. And this one this one is really gets you thinking maybe a little more. Hmm. Um, it's not super difficult to figure out what to do, but I remember the first time I played it, I kind of I kind of had to figure out where I was supposed to be shooting because it wasn't it wasn't as obvious as the first two. But uh, it starts out with these three, these three sections that fire like a laser. It's not a laser. It's like a light beam. It sort of spreads. Yeah, they're very thick. And um, there's three of them, and you have to shoot at them and knock those three out. That's the first phase. And then the next phase, it, it's um, like a, like a big cylinder, it's a, right? With it's these like a cylindrical thing out. that comes out of the out of the floor, yeah. and it's covered with some kind of purple scourgy stuff. stuff. Yeah, it doesn't really look like the like the scourge mass. It's different, but it it is. It is kind of gross it's in the, its own way. <laughs> it's, it's the scourge. It's yeah, just yeah, yeah, kind yeah, of related yeah, to yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. After you kill those three laser light beam things, it like falls into the ground, and then you got to knock out another three sections. But with this time, with each section you knock out, the the battle gets harder because it it covers one third of the floor with this with the scourge mass. So you're left with less room to work with, right? And less of a target. So you have to. So <laughs> over the pro- course of the battle, it gets tougher and tougher and uh the anxiety builds <laughs> and the music keeps the music keeps yeah it's a it's a it's a good one the first the first boss i would say is is actually hard yeah this is where the game kind of starts to get yeah. to that feel where you're gonna not have such an easy time yeah. flying through this right, one as right, you did right. in the first couple excerpts yeah. and uh then yeah it's it's really cool looking you know it's just this huge giant tower that you're just kind of slowly knocking pieces out of mm-hmm. At the end, it kind of like it lobs these energy orbs, orbs yeah. or globby orbs yeah. at you, right. and they kind of come in an arc, and they come directly towards you. Yeah. 
but the game doesn't really do very well with shadows. Yeah. So some of the objects, like sometimes you'll have a like a platform that like rotates around the stage and you can jump on and get off and to go to different doors. That'll have a shadow underneath it. But a lot of times enemies or you when you're jumping, don't, they don't have shadows. So it's really hard to tell, especially with this. It's taking a lot of blind jumps. Yeah, and with these, yeah. these orbs that are being fired at you, you don't know where they're going to land right. because there's no way to tell how close it is to the ground. It doesn't like scale up in size as it gets closer or anything. So you're really just kind of dodging yep. blindly. Um, you know, you kind of want to get away from it to the left or right and not try to have it go over you because you don't know if it's going to land short or land long. Um, exactly. So interesting stuff there, especially, yeah, and then when you're when you're jumping on platforms, you kind of have to uh, almost like trial and, and, and yeah, error. It really um, is. Luckily, there aren't any real bottomless pits in this game. Yeah. Uh, but you might be landing in some scourge that you have to, or mm -hmm. scourge that you have to... Uh, you know, climb back up out of and try to jump again and try to do a slightly different angle or different length or uh, that that makes it really tough. But and because you're in a you're constantly in a panic mode, right? You you, you don't necessarily have the the convenience of let me stop lining and line up, up yeah, and, yeah, line up your jump. Let's see, I got to position myself here and you think about it because even if even if the enemies weren't rushing at you, your your scourge meter is still ticking away. <laughs> there's yep, there's yep. always something. So. But this to me, what what you're talking about now, this really is the. Um, at least for me, this is sort of the thing that makes this game not a 10. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, it may not be anyway, but for me, for my personal preferences and what I what I love about this, this type of game, I love this game. This is the one thing that makes me like frustrated at times. Yeah. Because it, it doesn't handle layers very well. Right. So like so like the level designs are really gorgeous and really colorful and really detailed and really nice, but. But there are times when you're, like you said, you're up on the, maybe the second layer. You'll have like a floor, then you'll have like a, a wall, and you can stand on top of that layer. To jump from that to a moving platform to another platform, it's, it can be like you're just making blind jumps. Yeah, it's, and it seems like the designers do try to make it as clear as possible as to like where you have to go. It's just kind of getting there and yeah. almost like... I forgot his name. Uh, like MC Escher, almost almost yeah, like yeah, one yeah, of his yeah. paintings where you've got possible figure, <laughs> right? Different different things in different layers, and you ha kind of have to look at the bottoms of things and yeah. where they line up to really determine. You're constantly doing that. There's no shading for like things that are further in the back or darker or anything, so it really makes it hard to. Yeah, you know, that's another. But that, in a way, if you think about it, that sort of adds to it because during all this chaos, you're trying to you're trying to to plan your platforming. Yeah. So you're you're constantly looking around the screen. All right. If, if this layer lines up with with this layer, that must mean I can jump from here to there. Right, right. Rather than just having, you know, when, when you have the benefit of like a side scroller, there's only really one. You're looking straight at it. You know where how to how to make your jumps. Yeah. In this case, it's it is tough. It is definitely tough. Yeah, and 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 I feel like a lot of it is probably a hardware limitation too. You know, those handhelds. It's not a lot of screen real estate yeah. to try to, and not sure. a lot of color palettes that you can like you know choose from and also keep the, the performance of the yeah. game the way you want it to be too so yeah i don't know a whole lot about that but i can see i can see what you mean by yeah i'm that. sure there were some limitations and it was yeah. it's a very ambitious game and i think they did the best they could for the you know the hardware that they were working on at the time it is beautiful i mean the especially with the characters with genosa's animations even when she's just standing she's there. always in like this bouncing yeah, ready yeah, position yeah yeah, yeah. and you, if you look closely you can see like her feet shifting and her arms moving and and, and it's and her hair she has this is probably a good thing to point out she has this incredible hair she, i mean she's just, abnormally long red yeah, ponytail yeah it's 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 her her hair is the size of her body and it's always whipping around um, not a gameplay element it's no. just part of her design if Shantae yeah. had hair like that she would be unstoppable <laughs> basically if bayonetta had hair like that no, also she'd definitely be unstoppable <laughs> right all right, so let's move on to our next track. This is the next level, excerpt four, called Deadscape. This, now, see, this part sounds creepy. D definitely, yeah. All right, well, let's take a listen.
right, we're back. That was excerpt for Deadscape from Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. I love the like breakbeat. The very the, this is a very less of a intense sound mm-hmm. than most of the other tracks. Um, now I haven't been this far in the game, so is this less of an intense level or? Um, it's a little more sp- it's a little more spacious and open. Mm. Like you have more. It's it's like a deserty looking place. Okay. And the, the each section sort of has more. It, it, it's more open because it's it's you're you're outdoors now, so it feels more open in the sense that the, that there's more space, but it's you still feel as com- confined because of the like the enemies you know the constant enemy right enemies right rushing at you yeah it, there is sort of like a, a a very subtle like sense of reprieve that you get because like this is this is probably the most use this word very loosely but it's the most like relaxed <laughs> of music uh in the game at least it, it, it gameplay wise this is this might be my third favorite track in this game yeah it's it's really good like i said i love that i love that backbeat mm. and then the melody is almost like almost like gospelish yeah towards, it's very pretty like, yeah like the third section is just very there's a lot of uh depth and texture to those mm-hmm. synths and each of the instruments themselves are kind of flat sounding. When you put them all together, mm-hmm. it, it does create a. They work very, very well together. I, I think that's a that's a definitely a theme in this soundtrack. I yeah. think. And um, we were talking um, during a break earlier on about how um, we sort of agreed that Kaufman tends to, not to any fault or anything, but he he puts a lot a, a lot of, a lot of layers, a lot of things in the music. Yeah. Um, like with the Shovel Knight soundtrack, which is obviously amazing. It, it sort of can, can feel at times like maybe there's a little you, you want to be able to focus on certain channels but there's so much going on that you know this just there's a lot going on right but but with this one he he seems to be more purposeful maybe with 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 the the channels that he's using because there are fewer of them and he's using them each together and to work together yeah which he always does but it's a little easier to to get a grasp on in, yeah. in this game, I think. Yeah, I mean, we, we actually just did look it up while we were looking at the last song, and the DS does have 16 channels of audio for sequenced music, which is twice the amount that the SNES does. But I, I don't think he's using nearly as many... I mean, he, he could be using different channels for different percussion sounds or something like that. But, but it's also the fact that the Game Boy Advance, if it's the same, I don't know much about Right, that right. That has far fewer channels, too. Yeah. So, yeah, you're probably right. Limited by the music that was, yeah. yeah, definitely. But, you know, the nice thing about that is the sound effects don't cut out when, or, um, you know, instruments right. don't cut out when you're using sound right. effects like they did on the SNES or the uh, right. or the NES. That's a beautiful so, thing. <laughs> um, yeah, so you can listen to the music in its full, full glory as you're playing through the game, mm-hmm. uh, as well as listening to it in your car. Um, so let's uh, try to keep things a little bit short since we have a lot more music yeah. to get through. Yep, yep. We'll get on to Boss 4 Jor- Jormungand? Jormungand? I think it's Jor- Jormungand. Jormungand. That it's sounds it's better to me. Yeah. All right, let's listen to Jormungand. We'll be right back. That was uh, Jormungand, uh, Boss 4 from uh, Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. I think that track probably has one of the more interesting drum tracks. Yeah. There's a lot, oh, there's yeah. a lot of really like... Uh, I got like a Mad Max kind of a feel. Yeah. From a very tribal sounding, yeah, very, very tribal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A, lot, a, lot of, um, a lot of different drum sounds kind of thrown in and a lot of like layered beats going on. Um, not one of the more chaotic ones. It's a little it's a little more subdued which isn't saying a lot i mean right. it is still very it is still very energetic 
but this this fight this this fight has a lot more to it. I really really enjoyed this one. Um, it's been a while. I have beaten this game. I, I, I would point that out as mm -hmm. a, as a credit <laughs> <laughs> to myself. Um, but it has it's been a little while since I beat since I've beaten it. I have been playing it recently. I haven't gotten this far this time around yet. But uh, this boss this reminds me for some reason of the uh, ant lion from Final Fantasy. Uh, is it uh, six that the ant lion is from? When it's like the first boss you fight. Yeah, the American three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep, yep. Um, where it's this this creature that is is uh, in the ground, burrowed in the ground, but it, it's like this. It's more of a worm, than the like animal. a big sandworm. Yeah, and it. So there's this. You you come to the room and there's this crater in the ground, and it's and it you know it, it comes up out of the crater, and and um, now that you're sort of out of the facility, you begin to encounter more biological. Uh, more biological life forms than before, and I think this is the this is the first boss that technically isn't an infected machine, you know what I mean, or right. something like that. Right, right, it's fully organic. Yeah, it has a really cool um, mechanic to the fight. At least one part of it, where these there's four orbs around the room that um, when 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 the uh, Jormungan goes into the ground, basically turns the uh, the hole in the ground into a vacuum, so. Um, it sucks you in. So there are these four orbs around the room, and you have to use the grappling hook to, to not get sucked in. Kind of hold you in place. Yeah. yeah. And they're in each form. Obviously, is presents a, a, a new uh, challenge, which is really cool. But uh, yeah, this is one of my probably one of my favorite bosses. Yeah. In the game. And a lot of these bosses, at least the ones that I've seen so far, all take place on mostly flat surfaces, so you don't yeah. have any of those kind of complaints that we have about oh, you know, that would be planes and yeah. shadows and stuff yeah, to be yeah, able to yeah. you know. So they. They all work very, very well in terms of gameplay as far as yeah. the bosses go. You, you, you have a set pattern you got to stick to to be able yep. to beat most of them, and uh, and for the most part they work pretty darn well. I would so. say each boss in this game is fun. Yeah. I mean, the, the first two may not be that challenging, but they're still really fun. I think. Yeah, they, they look fun, and I had a lot of fun beating the, the yeah. first two first couple, as yeah. well. So, yeah. especially that that first one where you're just kind of you feel like you really accomplished something when you've yeah. figured out that you have to defeat yeah, those yeah, four yeah. little pods and yeah. then and then get the everything else going. So, one of the things sure. I think that makes that first one easier is that the room is bigger than most of the other rooms too. I think. Yeah, yeah, definitely have a little more room to kind of scatter around. Maneuver. So we're gonna take a little break from the excerpt boss excerpt boss kind of pattern here. And Cam, you've picked out a few tracks that we're gonna play that are more like incidental yeah, tracks, right? Like situational things. They're like uh, little short little jingles and themes that appear at several times, you know, during the game. Like um, certain rooms you go into have a theme, and you 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 enter those rooms a lot, and you hear that theme a lot. But uh, and they're not very long, but um, they're they're definitely. I think important to point out because they're they're very good. And yeah, they play into the game a lot. So. Yeah, and it'll also give us the opportunity to talk about some of the more uh, facets of the game that we sure. haven't really discussed yet. Right. So, yeah. let's get into the first one. Uh, this one we briefly touched on what they're what they're for, but this is called Sick Bay. Let's take a listen. A little reprieve in gameplay and a little reprieve as far as the intensity of the music goes. That was Sick Bay from the game Scourge Hive from Jake Kaufman. I like this one. It's very simple. You get to take a breath. You get to take a breath. <laughs> Some very really nice textured synths mm -hmm. to kind of wash over you. Um, so what, what does a Sick Bay look like generally? It's it's They're basically all the same. There And there are several sort of scattered around. And, the, uh, and Magellan will, will put them on your map. When you reach a new area, he points out basically where they all are. Yeah. Um, and basically, you're just fighting moment to moment just to get to that next sick bay. Like that's 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 uh, the game, really. There's a lot more to it than that, obviously. <laughs> um, but but uh, it's basically they all look the same. It's like a just a, a round room with a round uh, device in the middle that you stand on. Um, it's like a green green circle. Yeah, and it lifts you up in the air, and you twirl around in this unnecessarily 
I don't know, this animation. It, it reminds me of like the save rooms in uh, Symphony of the Night where, you know, the coffin comes yeah, up. Yeah, and right, it's right, same, right. Same kind of uh, yeah, flourish It's there. just a thing to watch while it's loading yeah. or whatever, while, it, while it's saving. Um, so it brings your contamination level all the way back down to one. One. Never to zero. Yep. <laughs> and as soon as it gets down to one, it goes right up to two. Before it's you even like, leave the room, you yeah, usually have three you leave or the four room, before right, Exactly, it, exactly. It's crazy. So it's like, oh, crap, I got to keep, I got to get. <laughs> so like you get a chance to take a breath, but you're immediately just, just like, in, you know, panicking again. Right. And when you decontaminate it, it automatically will save the game for you. So it's like a one, one shot kind of. Yeah. Get uh, save it and keep moving, kind of thing. Basically, yeah, and you know, it reminds me of like the, you know the save rooms in Resident Evil, where there's a you know a typewriter and you can take a take a breath. There's not going to be any zombies in there or anything. So, mm-hmm. um, but yeah, your your whole concept of this game is kind of racing from one of these to the next and uh, trying to get as much done as possible in between. And there are a lot of times where you just don't have enough. Uh, you don't have enough time to get what you need to get done. You might have to go back to happens a all save the time point that you've already been yep, to to time. lower your scourge level and then go back and finish up whatever you forth, started back yep. and forth <laughs> so crazy stuff yeah you know adds to the gameplay but also you got like you said adds to the sense of urgency that you've got mm-hmm. fleeing through the game so let's move on to our next incidental music uh this one is called elevator we'll be right back You've just been elevated by Elevator from Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. Nice, simple track. Yeah. Nice and uh, atmospheric, and has it's just foreboding enough. Like you're about to go to a different spot, you don't know what to expect, and it's kind of like ooh. Yeah. But mm-hmm. just enough. Good. You know? Good transition between yeah. you know sometimes the music might be different and wherever you end up and mm-hmm. and et cetera et cetera. But uh, yeah, I got kind of a kind of a Metroid-ish feel. Yep. Uh, there's a tune right at the beginning of Battle Clash, that super scoped game mm-hmm. that I did a show on on Pixel Tunes. It's got a, a very similar flavor to this one, and uh, yeah, so not much else to say about that. Yep, you're not really in the elevator room for more than ten seconds, so it doesn't, right. it doesn't need to be an overly elaborate, long, lengthy track. It's just a little cinematic view, like you know, raising up this right. through the cylinder like mm-hmm. a vacuum tube kind of right. a deal. So uh, let's move on to our next one. This is Nexus Inactive, and we haven't talked much about what uh, these ne- Nexus is. Nexi? Nexi? Maybe Nexus they're Nexi. I? What a Nexus is. We'll be right back. <laughs> <laughs> All right, that was Nexus, Inactive. Man, I wish that was a full-length track. Mm-hmm. That's really cool, very gritty, almost like a like a, a dark hip-hop kind of a feel to it. Broody. Would have been a great backing for, you know, like a full-length track. Mm. But still pretty cool as it is. Yep. just kind of does its thing and fades yep. right out. It's one of those rooms you don't spend a lot of time in. But So at the end of each area the areas aren't directly connected so at, at the end of each you have to you end up you teleport to the next one and you have to activate the teleportation platform and to do that you have to activate nodes throughout the area and once you get them all it activates the nexus and then you can teleport and i think i was trying to remember exactly but i think that i think the nexus teleports you just before the boss? I was thinking maybe it was after the boss. Okay. I, I, I don't remember exactly what, but that's, that's the gist of it. Okay, so that makes sense. Well, that, that would, would make sense because the next track coming up is called Nexus Teleportation. Yep. Right. So let's take a listen.
All right, that was Nexus teleporting from Scourge. Hive. Hive. Yeah, that one. That one. <laughs> that Scourge. <laughs> um, yeah, so that was that's a, a very subdued one. That's I think that might be the only track in the game. Oh, wait, no, it's not. But I was going to say it, the only track in the game without drums, but it has, except from that occasional timpani. Yeah. Dun, dun. Kind but, of similar um, to the, the intro to the game. Like yeah, that, that first similar track kind played. of feel. Yeah. Similar, yeah. With a little more hope to it, maybe. <laughs> yeah, you know, but uh, you know, I like the little arps in the background, and again, those kind of sweeping violin-ish mm-hmm. synths over the top. That seems to be the style that Kaufman yeah. kind of goes for whenever he wants to uh, do something cinematically or, you know, express some sort of um, action on the screen that you can't really control. You know, something like that. Yeah, like string synths that kind of fade in and out. Yep. Slowly. Yeah. Exactly. All right. Well, we've been building up to uh, this one. Oh, jeez. So what do we got coming up next? Um, get your Xanax ready for, for this one. <laughs> this, <laughs> this track is very simply called Emergency. Um, and we'll, 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 talk, we'll talk about why <laughs> it's called that. Yeah. If you have a pacemaker, stand at least 30 feet from your speakers, please. Thank you. <laughs> That was emergency, emergency, incoming enemy fighters, <laughs> yeah. which is one emergency from uh, Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. What is that game? Which game does that? With Star the- Fox. Emer- oh, okay, yeah yeah, 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 yeah. I couldn't think of what it was. <laughs> um, yeah, so there's there are these rooms in this in this game where um, this timer it has these 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 buttons you have to activate, but you have to activate them all at the same time. As soon as the timer starts, when you shoot the first, because yeah, you have to shoot them, I think. You shoot one, the timer starts, and you got to go all the, around the room finding the other ones. And you got to shoot them all and activate them all. And Sounds usually, fun. Yeah, and usually there are other dangers of course. in the room. Enemies to destroy, trying to, things yeah, to get in your way. Trying to infect you and all that stuff. So this music is, this is uh, like we've said a hundred times, it's a very chaotic, intense game. But this music, this, this music is just instant heart attack. <laughs> um, and uh, if it were a boss music... I would probably pass out. You'd be shaking too much <laughs> yeah, to be yeah, able to, to, to able complete to it. Yeah, exactly. Thankfully, it's it's like it's it's a pretty straightforward thing that you're trying to achieve when this music is playing, but it it, it is very it can be very di- very difficult. Yeah, and and as you were saying while we were listening to it, you know, Coffin does also have that you know really really busy kind of backbeat mm-hmm. and all those arps going on with just a very simple kind of violin Subtle. over the top yeah. like a lot of the other stuff in this in this album so he's got kind of a theme going on here mm-hmm. a little bit at least and uh, it seems to be working pretty well for the soundtrack so let's move on to our next song and this one is from the menu back that was menu but not really no it was menu (laughs) so it's called menu but cam was uh you know just playing the game out of his pocket for a little bit and it doesn't really no it only plays in one place that i can think of in the game and it's not a menu at at the end of every area it gives you your statistics basically it's like your results screen basically which kind of gives the impression that maybe it's like a stage based game but it but it isn't really it does flow more than that but um it tells you like your your accuracy and it gives you your your rank. It's kind of so, like your 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 post boss stats, right, exactly. more than like your exactly. level stats. Right. Yeah. 
Um, so it gives you uh, a rank based on your accuracy, and uh, I, f I think that's... I don't know what else there could... Oh, and how many enemies you defeated. Okay. So, yeah, and th this music plays there. I don't know where else it plays. It's certainly, yeah. not, certain, certainly not at any menu I, I can think of. Okay, so uh, whoever was putting the yeah. soundtrack together just, I guess, couldn't think of a better name yeah. than menu. Brain mm -hmm. fart. Yeah. <laughs> but pretty good track. I mean, nice little backbeat. Yeah. It's got some, like, LFO-style bass going on there, so... Good stuff. I mean, I, I feel like this would be a cool little like congratulatory like. Yeah. I mean, it's it, it, You're a hero now, kind of music. It sounds exactly like what it is. I mean, yeah. to me, it sounds like you know the end of a of a level, and this is this is how well you did or or how well you didn't. <laughs> exactly. Hey, if you beat the boss, you probably did well Pretty enough. Well. Yeah. yeah cause <laughs> considering how hard this game is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So speaking of that, let's get back into our stage levels. We are heading back to excerpt. Five, and this one is from the Mines level. We'll be right back. So that was Excerpt 5, Mines, from uh, Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. And I just wanted to point out to Ed that this is an ice. These are ice mines. Uh. <laughs> Somewhat famously uh, not a fan of ice areas. Yes. And, and just imagine all the chaos in this game on top of, on top of a slippery yeah. ice floor. Oh, I couldn't even... <laughs> couldn't. I despise ice levels. Yeah, it's just yeah. something about them that, uh, I don't know. I just don't like the lack of, of control. But mm -hmm. that being said, I really, really like this track. This is the yep. first time I've heard this song. And mm -hmm. uh, that kind of glitchy break beat is so cool. There's not too much in terms yeah, of melody neat. above it. Uh, but then about a minute and 30 seconds in, the drums kind of solo out. And then you get that really cool kind of a solo with that that those extra kind of echoey pitter-patters in the mm -hmm. background. Mm -hmm. Very, very cool stuff. Yeah. And as I was thinking, this Cam comes and sits back down and he's like, this is my least favorite track on the soundtrack. <laughs> I'm cursed. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> you were just talking about that. Um, in the last episode, you were just talking about well, The last episode we did together, right, yeah. Right, right. I say this is my least favorite, which it is, but I really like it. I it's mean, still a good there's, track, there's yeah. not one on here that I don't like. If I were to rate them, this would be of, of the excerpts. This would probably be the last one. Mm. But that's um, fine. I'll, I'll <laughs> deal with it. I won't kick you out. All right. All right. <laughs> At least we can finish the show. Right. The ice doesn't play into into the area as much as you might think, though. It doesn't. So like, there are there are rooms where like the floor, like the main floor, is ice. But there's like platforms and stuff you can get away from it as as much as you can get away from anything in this game. Okay. And some rooms there's no ice, but it but it's it's an ice mine. It's like an ice cave kind of theme thing. But uh, it would be your least favorite, I would say. Oh probably. yeah, for sure, <laughs> probably. Uh, so like, but does it does it allow you to like fall off platforms and stuff? Like, is it that slippery? That yeah, you slip pretty. Uh, but but if I remember correctly, it's mainly just like the bottom floor that's ice okay there might be occasionally like a, a 
a small platform where you got to like quickly jump off of, but you don't spend much time slipping around on it or yeah, something yeah. like that. As long as you can keep your momentum going. Yeah, it yeah. It doesn't I, affect you that much. I didn't, I remember when I played this area, I didn't think like, oh man, this is way more of a pain than the others because of the ice. The, ju- the ice just added like a, you know, a, a, a different mechanic to yeah, the okay. second level. All right. I can, yeah, I can accept can that because I do. I do plan on picking up my save game and, and playing through the whole. I thing hope so. Yeah, so. I really hope so. It's, yeah, it's. I, I hope more people play this game because it really is. I mean, it really is great, and um, I think to a lot of people, especially Metroid fans, not only will they notice the parallels with Metroid in general, but specifically, this has a lot in common with uh, Metroid Fusion, mm-hmm. mostly because of the. The, the you know the impending threat of a virus right to, the little scourge thing right. yeah um, it, it draws a lot of inspiration from that game in particular very cool yeah yeah the thing I like too about at least DS nowadays is that uh, you, if you have like a flash cart for your DS you want to throw your ROM on there or if you want to transfer that save file you can also transfer on the computer and there are some emulators that play this game just about perfectly mm. so I was able to kind of like start off on my 3DS and then move it over to my PC and, and that's keep cool. playing it so that's cool um, which, which is nice because you don't use that secondary screen the bottom screen that much it's only for your for your mm-hmm. map so a lot of these emulators will let you kind of blow up your gameplay screen the top screen really big and then just kind of have your secondary oh, screen oh that's cool I've never seen I've like never a smaller seen one towards a the DS, bottom uh, emulator before that's, yeah it works really cool. well you can kind of independently resize each screen so you can kind of focus on the gameplay on the tv and yeah so it's pretty neat Neat. anyways let's move on to our next track uh this one is the fifth boss in the game and his name is heimdall Back, that was Boss Five Heimdall from Scourge Thor. Hive. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> what? Thor. Yeah, basically. <laughs> Fantastic track. I really, really like this one. Fits right in with the theme of uh, Excerpt Five: The Mines. A very thick, mm-hmm. breakbeaty kind of hip hop beat with some, you know, minor overlying uh, instrumentation. But so cool. Much mm-hmm. a little bit more aggressive than the yeah. Excerpt Five track, but sure, yeah. I makes me like it even more. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I like this uh, boss battle too. It's it's got a lot going on. It keeps you on your feet. You're doing a lot of jumping. You have a double jump at this point, point. and this is a, it's a good battle to, to highlight another aspect of this game that I love, which is the um, so there. I think I mentioned earlier that there are three or four different types of enemies that they're in a different category, like yeah. biological, mechanical, energy. So there are six different weapons. Each weapon has like a blaster of some kind that you use to directly attack. The other ones, certain certain other weapons have more of a, uh, you have to use a more strategic approach to them. But each enemy has a, a weapon that they're vulnerable to. Okay, so kind of like Mega Man stuff. Right, but also a weapon that enhances them. Right. So like if you're, if you're overwhelmed by, say, like a bunch of bio enemies and a bunch of mechanical enemies, and you're trying to shoot one or the other you got you're trying to kill one without powering up the other and you and it's sometimes you can't avoid it right because i remember there was a at least as as far as i got there was like the energy beam which is the first weapon you get will destroy like the mechanical enemies in one shot but the biological ones or at least some of them it'll bring it'll make them more powerful makes them move faster right yeah but as uh difficult as that can be the controls are very fluid so it's the um, you push the is it the L button to open up that circle that it's lets the you R, s- the R button opens up the circle the L button does right the I get them back backwards yeah. sometimes but um, it brings up this like circle and then you just you hold the button and select from the se- there's the center of the circle you just select in the direction which weapon you want right and it sort of freezes the g- the game temporarily and it sort of has this like spring loaded feel so you select a weapon 
and then like it will return to the center like after you select it it just kind of it kind of really like, it kind of like grabs the weapon and brings it right, to the center right. so you know it, which it's, one you're using it's very intuitive controls and you can switch between them very quickly during battle yeah and you can switch back to your regular just by tapping it shooter yeah. just by yeah tapping yeah, the R yeah. button without pressing a direction so yeah, it pretty really easy. makes it it really makes it so as intense as it is it flows really nicely and you can you know if you're trying to kill a, a mechanical enemy you can you can select the uh, EMP um, weapon shoot that and then quickly switch to the one that affects the energy right as long as your aim <laughs> is right and you, you don't hit the wrong one yeah um, it, it flows really nicely yeah. speaking of which is this is a game that would really benefit from like analog controls because yeah. you're you can only fire in eight directions which is kind of I guess almost an antique gameplay mm -hmm. uh, aspect by the time this game came out in 2006 so a lot of times you'll you'll find that enemies are just kind of like north northeast to you and you right, can only shoot right. north or northeast yep. and yep. you've got to maneuver yourself so that you can get either directly below it or directly to the side of it to be able to actually right. uh, shoot it so that that adds to the challenge as well yeah when i first played this i was playing on the ds light um and now i'm, I'm playing it now on my uh, 2ds excel which has the analog stick mm -hmm. but it, it still only it still has the, the six you know direction right so it's still it, it helps kind of make it feel a little more fluid but it's still it's still limited in that sense it doesn't it's not like a crippling limitation or anything, no no but, no but i mean the game was built so that it yeah, would only right. have those directions and it works so. fine yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah but it's something that would have been would have made it a little bit easier i guess is, is basically what i was trying to say right 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 but uh, i think there i think there's a theme with the with the boss names they might it might i think they're uh maybe norse mythology or something i think um, oh, maybe heimdall is uh first the first time i ever heard of heimdall was xenogears there's a there's a gear named heimdall and then everything after that i just makes me think of xenogears yeah there was a game called heimdall wasn't there it was a snes or genesis know. game it was it was this big guy with a axe god long long time ago it was not a very popular game but it was like one of those games that was like american developed or something and was just kind of very clunky Hmm. But uh, yeah, there was an actual game called Heimdall look that from up the 16-bit era, and we should look that up. But yeah, Scylla, Cyclops, these are all um, monsters oh, yeah, from are more Greek mythology. Ch might have, they might all be Greek, yeah, maybe, actually, maybe, yeah. or just from. But Heimdall, I think, is Norse, so maybe they're just monsters from mythology without yeah, any, without any, any bearing to uh, yeah, because uh, country because Thor is based on North. Norse mythology, very loosely, obviously, but like the character names. So I would assume right. Heimdall comes from the Norse. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, so uh, we got a couple more coming up that have some mythological names too. So we'll get the, those in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's listen to the next level's theme. This is excerpt six, Forest.
So that was Excerpt 6, Forest, from Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. And this is the final excerpt of the game. There's still a, um, a fair amount of the game left, but it's mostly bosses from, <laughs> from here out. Yeah, this feels really dark and foreboding. Mm -hmm. The percussion is so complex and layered, mm -hmm. uh, especially towards that B section where it's like you've got four different drum rhythms running yep. at the same time. Yep. Very, very cool mm -hmm. sounding. I really, really like this one. This one suits the area a lot too. You say it's it's dark and it's it's a very dark forest. Mm. It's not a it's not a very it's not a um, hundred acre wood type type forest. It's definitely more of a haunted forest kind of feel. It's funny dark. that this game kind of goes backwards from what a lot of other games do because usually mm, like I could be a first level forest. you know you start like in a forest and then you go to the desert and you start in these like you know organic kind of areas and then you end up in the technological the technodrome <laughs> yeah right exactly yeah. and this game kind of starts off in these fortified bases and then you end up moving into these you start in space yeah and then you you end up in a uh industrial facility right and then you end up in a desert and, and then you go a, to a forest a mine and then a forest yeah it is, this kind of seem backwards i never thought about that very cool interesting but does that mean like the way the scourge works i mean does it how does it affect areas that are more biological than if it if it really only affects kind of um but that's the thing I, they, it affects everything okay and, and, and so it's not just limited to yeah technology. like not it doesn't affect one thing more than anything else i think that's the that's the real danger of it is yeah it could it could envelop the earth theoretically you know? gotcha it seems to be that kind of thing i mean because like animals are subject to infestation and so are computers you know what i mean it's wow. like how can you even how can you contain something you, like i that? don't know if you could even make like a true like sci-fi story out of something like that because how can you because usually in sci-fi they try to explain that sort of thing right, i don't right. know how they would begin to explain that there would need to be some sort of chemical that you could you know spray on it to neutralize it or you know to neutralize things before they get into like an, like a some sort of a, like a vaccine that you can put yeah on. Right, right right you know that's crazy yeah very interesting <laughs> yeah, almost cool. it's almost kind of a like an allegory to like you know wildfires you know in california or something where there's just yeah. the spread that just eats everything yeah, yeah. and you need to try to get ahead of it yeah and sometimes even scorch things in order yeah. to to keep it from getting and sometimes you, you have know, to wait too like you have to it, sometimes it's more dangerous to try to right you know put it out very interesting yeah so anything else about the forest that's particularly interesting of note before we move on to the boss rush not really but just to reiterate the, the atmosphere like it definitely feels that area definitely is the like the creepiest just to just to be in yeah it definitely has a more dark theme than most of the other places in the game yeah no technology at all no, you know just not that i remember i mean there might be some there's probably like in order to move from one area to the next you have to collect some kind of key i don't exactly remember it's been a while since i was at that part but cool yeah so at this point you've got all your weapons you've got your double jump you're yep. probably leveled up got enough everything. that you've got a couple hundred hit points under your belt so you're several hundred i think she knows pretty, high, yeah. pretty ready to go at this point yeah and she, ha she and has to be <laughs> yeah. at this point <laughs> all right so let's take a listen to the first boss in a line of a few this is boss six mandragora Right, that was the theme from Mandragora Boss 6 from Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. Really cool song. Uh, very, very evil sounding. Yeah. I love that, that synth line. Yeah. I can't really think of anything else it really reminds me of. It's just very... Evil is a good word. Yeah. <laughs> very, there's a lot of tension behind it. Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like, you know, like The Matrix or something where there's like, you know, a, a really intense fight going yeah, on the yeah, screen, yeah, something yeah. like that. Yeah. Uh, and the Mandragora itself is just this huge kind of bulbous plant thing. Uh, that it's you Audrey fight. 2 from Little Shop. Yeah, essentially. Just... It almost looks like a Venus flytrap kind of <laughs> yeah, a deal. Yeah. Uh, so what, what did you like about this one? 
Um, basically, what you said. I mean, this this particular track is is uh, it it feels more like there's more like uh, malevolent malevolence mm-hmm. behind it. Yeah. You know, than maybe the other ones. A little orchestra hits in there too yeah. now and now and then. Yeah, and it and it again. I mean, it's it suits the battle perfectly. I mean, it, it's it's a plant creature, but when it opens up, when you get to the point where it's actually opening up, the thing that's inside looks like a this like brain thing that actually comes out of the plant so it's like it's almost like the plant is like a facade yeah so like what the actual like evil lurking inside it and it comes out and it sort of follows you around and you have to maneuver around to attack it this is probably one of my top two or three boss themes in this game i would say i like this one a lot definitely very very cool and so at this point you're once you beat Mandragora, mm. uh, like this little door opens up behind it, and that's so it's basically literally blocking the way to the next yeah. couple of bosses. Uh, and so the, the the final evil character, I guess you could say, is, is named the Source, right? Mm-hmm. So it's the Source of the Scourge, right? So that's I guess the name that they give it is literally the Source. Mm-hmm. So to get to the Source, you've got to get through one more boss, and that boss's name is in keeping with all of these mythological yeah, monsters yeah, yeah, yeah. Cerberus. So mm-hmm. let's take a listen to that one. That was Boss 7, Cerberus, from Scourge Hive by Jake Kaufman. So this is the first boss after the last save. Okay, That's what so I was the thinking. last, no turning back at this point, right. basically. After Mandragora, you get your last save, and then from that point on, it's just, just, it's, it's just a nightmare. So you gotta beat Cerberus, who is a three-headed thing on the wall, and which is really tough. Meanwhile, this music is playing which is perfect music because this might be one of the more like nerve-wracking mm. boss themes. And it feels a lot more like a traditional boss theme. Yeah, maybe, yeah. You know? A little less like heavy on the uh, the drums maybe. Yeah. Maybe a more more on the like the feel of the song. Kind of like an orchestral style yeah. track. I keep saying this, but it's one of my favorite, probably one of my favorite <laughs> one, boss themes. But um, I know this one really well. This one was nailed into my, he- into my head because um, after this... The final boss, which is two bosses, is really hard. Mm. Um, I'll elaborate on that later. But each time you fight it, you got to fight Cerberus again. You have to fight him first. So every time you lose, you have to right, fight Cerberus. Right, exactly, yeah, yeah. exactly. So I, I, ha- I had to do that so many times. Right. That um, he Cerberus sort of became easy eventually. Start getting the patterns quickly, down. Quickly, it became easy quickly compared to the, the source, the final boss. But still took several times to really get it, yeah. get it down. But um, but yeah, I mean, it's just you fight it over and over again because the the source keeps killing you. Um, uh, but it's a great track, so it's not like it's it's not like it's an annoying track that you have to keep hearing. So the, the it's pretty cool because it's it's called Cerberus because you know um, Cerberus is the three headed dog from myth- mythology, yep. and so what what comes out of the the like a hole in the in the ground in this cave is this sphere kind of split into thirds. Mm-hmm. And it's got uh, a being made of energy, a being made of organic matter, and a being made of metal or technology. And they kind of all split into thirds, and they all go into these little, these three holes mm-hmm. that are in the back of the, of the cave. And it basically forces you to switch between all your weapons yeah, to yeah, be able constantly. to destroy each of these different types of uh, one third of a boss, I guess. So each head of this, this Cerberus represents a different life form right a, a different type of, of of enemy energy organic and techno- right, technological right. so you're and each one is shooting its own different kinds yep. of weapons at yep. you and you're dodging all this stuff and also mm-hmm. trying to make sure you're hitting the right one with the right weapon because if you hit it with the wrong weapon then you're going to power up mm-hmm. instead of get mm-hmm. killed so 
Not easy. Meanwhile, it did not those, look easy at all. Meanwhile, those little energy creatures are all over the screen, and you got to take those out while you're yeah. trying to while you're dealing with it. So, good gravy. And then yeah. once you finally beat it, then just like Mandragora, a door opens up at the back of the room. Well, the doors are so the three spots on the wall where the where the Cerberus, the, the different portions of Cerberus attached to, are holes in the wall because that's where like the scourge has eaten through. Okay. And then once you once you beat it. The, the, when the when the Cerberus dies, you go through that middle hole and face the uh, the big the big bad, the first form of the big bad, the source of the scourge. Yeah. All right, well, let's take a listen to the theme song from the source, part one. Right, that was The Source, Part 1, Boss 8, from Scourge Hive, composed by Jake Kaufman. Really, really intense music here. Lots of those uh, breakbeats. It seems like the more the game goes on, the more Kaufman's kind of concentrating on these really like fast breakbeat-style mm. rhythm sections in order to convey that sense of urgency, and I really like that. I mean, I like that music anyway, so it's really hitting all the right notes for me. Mm-hmm. What about you? Yeah, I mean, at this at this point, you're. I mean, you you had just beaten Mandragora, and you had just beaten Cerberus, who's a very very tough boss. Yeah. Cerberus. Once you figure it out, you'll probably have to do it many many times, <laughs> um, because the last bit of the game is is Cerberus and the two forms of the Source. And at this point, I mean, you 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 had just beaten Cerberus. Your blood is pumping. You're you're sweating. You're 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 maybe your thumbs are cramping because you're all the jumping around and double jumping and flipping and switching between weapons and firing at this, firing at that, switching back to this weapon. Blah, 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 blah. Um, <laughs> and at this point, you're just like, you're barely hanging on. <laughs> right, yeah. <laughs> and then you finally managed, you finally managed to, to, uh, to beat the first, the first form. Also, what's cool is the, um, right before this fight, Genosa has a little exchange, a little dialogue with the source entity. And she's, she's got this great snark to her personality that I love. She makes mm. these, she makes these little quips, these little remarks that are that are so well, um, they're so well written, and, and the dialogue. I just love the dialogue in this game, and the, and this is the this is really where you find out that the source actually has a, I don't know what to a call voice. it, like a soul yeah. almost, yeah, um, and that you actually have almost like a villain that you're that you're up against. Uh, this is where you f- kind of first find that out, and uh, he even has like a like a he even shows like an image of his face, which is sort of like this. Uh, blurry sort of like um, it's like an older man kind of like yeah zombie merged looking. with this yeah. organic matter right, yeah 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 from here the, the the next part is one of the hardest things I've ever had to do in a video game so wow. <laughs> yeah I can't. and that's saying a lot yeah it's oh my god I'm just thinking about the just thinking about it is <laughs> making making me anxious all right so you want to move on to part two do it. All right, so let's listen to part two of The Source. Alright, so uh, sorry about your eardrums and possibly your speakers. That was The Source Part 2. And your mental health. Yeah, otherwise known as Boss 8 Part 2 from Scourge the Hive. And that was more of a screeching, groaning, shrieking cacophony than an actual piece of background music. Mind fuddery. Yeah, but definitely necessary for the show because it's you know literally the last yeah. boss before the, uh, the final ending sequence. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
And uh, yeah, I saw some footage of uh, the boss being fought, and wow, it's ridiculous. Yeah, this is up there of the top three or four hardest bosses I've ever had to fight. It, maybe it was just me. Maybe, you know, some people have different experiences when they're playing certain <laughs> games, but uh, this this thing just, this thing killed me over and over and over. Um, and that music certainly, you go from being, in every battle you're in a confined space of some sort, a room, Yeah. you know what I mean? But at this point, after the first form of the, the source, you're transported basically inside your own head. And it, so it's this... And this sort of like borderless, boundless, like, white, like a white void, white void, exactly, yeah. And you you can run around in any direction infinitely, but the boss is just always right on top of you, just basically. Out. Yeah. yeah. So it's this weird, like swirling blue thing with three Genosa clones swirling around it, and they do various things that they grab you, and they you get the life sucked out of you, and it's just it's. I can think of I can think of offhand just a couple more bosses that the. The final boss of Low G-Man on the NES was similarly difficult, but there haven't been that many that really was as taxing and, and, and as this one was. This one, when I beat this, it was, it felt like an achievement. You I know? believe I, I it, felt yeah. like, I felt like, holy crap, <laughs> like I finally did it. You just want to spike your DS in, yeah, in yeah, celebration. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and this, the, the music, I mean, it's like every track in this game is like beautiful in a way, you know what I mean? Even, even the intense crazy ones are still just like just sort of like really nicely formed and put together yeah so you might expect at this point maybe the most epic like theme in the whole game and then it turns out to be this <laughs> cacophony of like yeah dissonant like sounds just not sounding good <laughs> together right, right. At all. god it's crazy it, it just yeah. kind of culminates in this just yeah, yeah giant and it, it kind of makes sense i mean these songs do kind of get more intense and a little more aggressive and a little mm -hmm. darker sounding as you go throughout the game and then finally it's just like it's no longer even music anymore mm -hmm. it's just brah, you know <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's insane so after you finally practice and practice and practice and finally yeah. beat part two of the source you get to the ending sequence and we're going to do the ending and the credits uh in in one block because they kind of go hand in hand together so let's play those and we'll come back and wrap up our thoughts on the game and the show cool be right back
All right, that was the ending and credits themes from Scourge Hive. For the final time, composed by Jake Kaufman. Mm. Some great pieces of music. Uh, the ending theme's very uh, kind of rocking. It's got nice yeah. like guitar chugginess towards the bottom, mm-hmm. and then a lot of uh, really nice melody on top. Very uh, triumphant, I think. Yeah, it definitely feels like it's a reward for mm. all the hard work that you must have put into playing this game. Then again, anything is a it would be a reward after that last battle. It could <laughs> just be some scales. Da, 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 yeah. da, 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 and you'd be like, yeah, yes. I deserve this. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah, but I especially love that um, that ending, that epilogue theme, um, and it's uh, it gives you a nice, like a really a nice a cutscene with some stills, but really nice looking stills, mm. um, and kind of closes out the um, the story. And it's a good ending, very satisfying ending. Won't spoil it too much because you haven't played the whole game. You've seen, you've pretty much you know of the whole game now, but you haven't seen the end. We'll keep, right. We'll keep the end from you at least. Something you need to earn. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Got to unlock that one. Yeah. And then credits kind of takes it down yeah. a notch. Yeah. It's a little more on the dancey side yep. a little bit. Uh, really nice. Like you said, his bass lines are fantastic. Yeah, I love the bass line in that one, yeah. And then coupled with, of course, that that excellent percussion, his, his backing lines are mm-hmm. always mm-hmm. top notch. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it just feels really good. You know, it's like a two minute, nice little epic at the end yep. to listen yep. to. You see the credits roll and, and that's the end, man. So mm-hmm. at this point, you're kind of sitting back. You. You saw the end. You've got to sort of like bask in the in the glory of your own glory, pretty yeah. much, and get to curse all the names yeah. that scroll across the screen right, for torturing right. you for the past yep. several hours. Uh, how how many hours? Speaking of, do you, do you, would you estimate that you put into this game in order to beat it um, for first play? I want to say like twelve. Okay, that's not too too bad. Yeah, still a lot for an action game. Yeah, but. yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, there's a there's a lot of trial and error in this game. Yeah. Especially at the end. I mean, I had to fight that last round of bosses. I mean, you, you end up fighting like because because they go in order of difficulty. Cerberus is the easier of the three, mm. and then the first form of the source is tough. I mean, it's it's chaos. I mean, you're jumping around, switching weapons, and it's nuts. But then the last one is super hard. Right. But yeah, I mean, it's it's a great ending. I just love the ending. The whole ending sequence of that game is great. Cool. Well, it's got to be. I hope you know. It's it, it would it would really suck if it were just you know like yeah, a static. Yeah. You saved the princess. Poorly drawn image. <laughs> yeah. yeah, everything is good yeah, now. Yeah. Bye. There's sort of a Metroid esque feel. I mean, there's again, there's a lot of inspiration from Metroid, but it's mostly in theme and uh, visuals and and stuff like that. And, right. and as far as gameplay, I mean, there's. I'm, Metroid is all about atmosphere and exploration. This game is pure action and adrenaline. Yeah, yeah. Very, very different games. And I think that might have been part of the reason it hasn't. the game never really got that big is, I think, because it did get some criticism because it took a lot of cues from Metroid as far as, like, the the main, you know, female protagonist, bounty hunter-type character. Right, right. The space, you know, theme kind of thing. Taking a few too many cues, basically. Yeah, yeah. Um, and if you just look at it from that, from those angles, it does kind of come off as, well, okay, right. you probably could have been a little more original. But when you play the game, I mean, you're, it's not, there's nothing similar aside from your controlling the character that fires a weapon. Yeah, maybe, <laughs> maybe you know, for some people, when they see those similarities, they find it almost impossible to not compare it. Yeah. And so they're expecting something to play like Metroid, and then yeah. so anything else would be not as good, you know what yeah. I mean? So, anyways, so the funny thing is we were just talking is that... Um, this episode was kind of Cam's yeah. idea. So he was looking for, as part of his Patreon reward, which was last episode, uh, where we did flip the core, but he was... Can't wait to hear that. Has, haven't heard it yet. <laughs> yeah, no, that was that was a fun episode. Aaron was traveling. a great guest, so uh, I'm, I'm hoping everybody enjoyed that one. But yeah. So he originally proposed this soundtrack as... Uh, the Considered Blind Listen episode. It, yeah. And I was like, well, but you've been talking about it forever. I did check yeah, it out. I know yeah. everything about it. I know the composer. Too I was much like, about it. it wouldn't really be a fair Blind Listen because yeah. I wouldn't be blind. So uh, and we continued to you know, chat and I was like, well, why don't we just do the soundtrack? I mean, it's a great soundtrack. It's a fantastic composer. Let's just come on the show and do the soundtrack with me. And he was like, I just lit up sure. pretty much. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> I, I, I had immediately thought like, why didn't I think of that? Like, this is, <laughs> this is one of those games that like, I feel like not enough people have played or heard the music to. And yeah. it just, it's just one track after the other of just fantastic music. It's a really great game with a lot of stuff to talk about and would really make for a good episode. I mean, we just went through how many tracks, 20 plus tracks. Yep. 
Um, and all of them are bangers. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Except maybe that last one, but that last one is sort of like a... Oh, the Source Part 2? Yeah. Yeah, it's sort of like... Yeah, right. Not the last one. Yeah. But. but it's fitting for a really freaky final yeah. form of the oh, last yeah. boss. Yeah. So It's, it's nerve-wracking as all hell. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and there are actually a couple of music pieces on the game that were not used in the game. They were just kind of extracted from the from the game's software and don't appear anywhere else in it. So we're going to le- let those... Uh, be kind of our lead out for the show, so that's gonna we're gonna refer to them as unknown one and unknown two because that's what they're kind of referred to as in the uh, in the soundtrack. But before we close out the show, I want to thank Indira J, of course, for the incredible art, and Trevin Hughes, otherwise known as Dread, for the podcast theme song, and every place that you can find us. So you can find us on iTunes if you're listening on iTunes on an Apple phone. Just uh, don't forget to leave us a rating. We got about five ratings there right now. The more ratings we get, the better visibility we have for people looking for VGM podcasts. You can find us also on Facebook at facebook.com slash groups slash the VG Embassy. We're on Twitter and Instagram at the VG Embassy. Check us out there. And uh, you can look forward, of course, to more episodes soon with more guests and incredible music. Also, our Patreon page has been doing quite well lately. You can find us on Patreon. Just go to the VG Embassy.com, our website, and click on the Patreon link right underneath the main banner on the page. Uh, So far, I'd like to thank all of our Patreon patrons at the Taurus level, Chris Murray, Cameron Childs, and Shoryu Kenny, our VG Emissaries, Scott McElhone, Chris Myers, Donovan Orofino, and Ben, the Dyad Dishman, our audio attache, Cam Worma, some guy that I just met, uh, and Carlos, (laughs) and our VG Ambassador, Alex, the Messenger, Messenger. So at this point of uh, show recording, we just put out our first Patreon podcast, and it was uh, me and my buddies Joe and Todd, and we sat down and had some great discussion about Nintendo and uh, game collecting, uh, some hot topics in the game industry, played a couple musical tracks, had a great time doing it, and uh, been getting some good feedback from the patrons. So if you want to uh, be able to listen to those episodes that we're going to be putting out monthly, you can subscribe at the VG Emissary tier or higher, and you will get a bonus third episode every month full of ridiculous banter. Stuff. Yeah. That first episode was outstanding. Well, thank you. I thank really you. enjoyed it. Yeah, we had a lot of really fun putting it together. Yeah. Um, beer and chips definitely help while you're recording oh, yeah. the show. Yeah. <laughs> so any last thoughts you have on Scourge before we wrap up the show? Well, there's one critical thing that everyone should know about this game which would probably get everyone to to play it if nothing else gets you to play it just know that once you beat it you can change Genosa's hair color and her outfit and there are endless number of combinations that's cool if you're the type that likes to accessorize maybe that'll maybe that'll inspire you to finally play this amazing game it's a cool little new game plus yeah yeah plus you get to play a higher difficulty which what what why (laughs) Why (laughs) i haven't tried it i don't i don't plan on it wow because i'm not a masochist yeah yeah i didn't want to do that also i I just want to uh again thank mike levy for suggesting this game to me a while back because i don't know if i would have found it if he hadn't mentioned it so. yeah no and and then through you and him i never would have found yeah, it either yeah. so we wouldn't the show would not have existed hopefully we're spreading it to more people play this game it's kind great. of like kind of like the scourge we're just yeah. kind of infecting uh, everybody uh, that was the maybe that was the point the point of it all <laughs> <laughs> all right guys well cam thank you so much for joining me again and we've already got some more ideas kicking around for future yeah, thanks episodes for me back. and uh and that's it so we will see you guys next time until then take care See ya.